Go ahead. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Pine Drive Wednesday night prayer meeting via our Zoom, great technology that God has, has gifted us with. Um, let me open us with prayer, and then we're going to take a look at John chapter 14, a few verses out of John chapter 14 in just a minute. If you have your Bibles there. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, once again, we meet here, <clears throat> excuse me, on this Wednesday evening. Or we are meeting as your children, we're meeting as your servants. We're meeting with you, knowing that you are our Father, our ever present help. We know this is a prayer meeting, it's a meeting in which we're going to lift people up. Maybe even some will lift up ourselves, their selves to you, Lord. But Father, we just thank you that that you're present, whether we're in a sanctuary or we're in a building or we're in our individual homes, Lord, your, your presence is here. And God, we ask that as we take a look at your word briefly tonight before we come to the Lord, uh, come to you in prayer, that uh, you would open our hearts, you would speak to us. God, we, that you would make this time that we're here together for this very, very important meeting as many say, as some say, the most important meeting of the week because it can set the tone for what we do the rest of the week and what we do when we enter your church on Sunday morning. So Father, we just praise you that we can come into your presence tonight and you in our presence. And we just thank you in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Well, we have any praises tonight before John chapter 14. I want to talk to you tonight about uh, a message that, I, that I've titled Living by Covering Prayer. Living by Covering Prayer. Um, I was, um, was reading something that a man by the name of uh, uh, Dr. Redpath uh, had written, and, and he said this about prayer. He said, I believe the Lord has taught me this lesson above all, never to undertake more Christian work than can be covered in believing prayer. He said, each of us has to work at what this means in our own personal experience in relation to our own spiritual life. But I believe this is a huge abiding principle, abiding principle for us all. And then he went on to say, to cover something in believing prayer is to take time and to take energy and effort to stay with God until God uh, answers that prayer. We stay with him. We don't leave the place where we're praying to him, uh, assuming we're in our prayer closet or wherever you're your special places to meet the Lord there in your home. And we don't leave that place until we're convinced, we're certain in our mind that our prayer has been settled in our hearts because we know that it's going to be settled in the one to whom we're praying. And he said, Jesus never went to the cross until he went to Gethsemane. And he first discovered the cross, or he first covered the cross that he was going to in Gethsemane, believing when he came out of that garden that his prayer, that his prayer was going to be answered that he prayed to the Father. And he walked out of there, the garden of Gethsemane in victory and with confidence because he knew the victory had been won. And so what did he do? He covered the next step after Gethsemane that he was gonna take in believing prayer. Listen to what Jesus said to the disciples here shortly before he was going to go to the, to the cross. And, and he re, this is recorded in John chapter 14. And let me begin reading in verse 8. And John records, he said, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, 
show us the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Did you catch that? That, that the Father God, even though Jesus was God, that the Father was dwelling in Jesus. And he said in verse 11, he said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me or else. Believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than those will he do because I am going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, this I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. That's pretty positive. That is a promise. Heavenly Father God, help us um, to be reminded or understand with a clear mind these words that uh, you spoke to your disciples nearly 2,000 years ago and they're being spoken to us and have been spoken to us 2,000 years later, Father. Lord, uh, we know how powerful prayer is. We've each experienced in our life. And so, Father, just speak to us just for these few moments before we come before the throne of grace with Jesus there at your right hand. And we pray these things in his name. Amen. <clears throat> I want to look at verse 10 uh, again here. Uh, Jesus is saying to the disciples, essentially, that they misunderstood what he had been teaching. And remember earlier, um, they had asked him, uh, to teach them to pray. They didn't ask him how to pray. They said, Jesus, teach us to pray. Why did they ask him that? Well, we know that because they watched his ministry here on earth. He didn't, he didn't do anything unless he covered what he was about to do or what he was doing in prayer. And we know that in, uh, uh, once he began doing those miracles, that, that, uh, that he could get no free time, if you will. But he would wake up in the morning and he would already be at his door, so to speak, ready to be healed, ready to, to see Jesus. And so that's one of the reasons that he had to get up even earlier in the morning so that he could cover that day and what he was going to do in prayer with his father. And so Jesus is saying to the disciples, uh, again, in verse 10, He said, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. And he said, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, not on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. He said, you are clinging to my physical presence. Remember, he was about to, uh, this is his really farewell address to them. And, and he said, you're clinging to my physical presence. And, and you're, you're fearful because I told you I'm going away. And so you're fearful and, and you're frustrated because my physical presence, I said, isn't going to be with you. And here's the secret, he said, kind of paraphrasing it to my life and the secret to my success here on this earth, the secret of my sufficiency and never um when, when when you're not in my presence anymore and he said this is the secret of my life everything i said and did was with the father dwelling in my heart dwelling in me and whatever he said to do i did whatever he spoke to me i did i was obedient and as a matter of fact my physical absence, he was telling the disciples, will increase your work. You'll do even greater things than I have done here. And here what, what Jesus is really seeking to do is what, um, what, what I try to do so often. In fact, whenever I speak to you or whenever I write a message or, or whatever, 
trying to encourage you. And this is what Jesus is doing to them. He knows their hearts. He knows what they're going to experience when, when he leaves that upper room and he goes into the Garden of Gethsemane, he comes out of the Garden of Gethsemane and he's crucified, dead and buried. He knows their emotions that they're gonna have. And so he says, look again in verse 13, whatever you ask in my name, whatever you ask in my name, it's as, as if he's trying to just drill this into him, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. I will do that the Father, so that the Father may be glorified, glorifying me. So do you see what Jesus is saying? He says, I want you to learn how to live a miraculous life here on this earth. He's saying that to us tonight. I want you to know how to live a miraculous, abundant, spirit-filled life here on this earth. And he said, the way you do it is you do it by prayer. He said, my father gave me everything I said, everything I asked. My father did this through me, did everything through me, everything I did. It was my father doing it through me. It's kind of what, what I speak about uh, when, I, when I title my encouraging, daily encouragement message, God's hands, feet, and voice. We are God's hands, feet, and voice when he wants to do something. So he said, everything I did. Jesus prayed from morning at noon and at night. He was constantly in prayer. And that's exactly what Jesus is trying to say to the disciples. Everything I do has to be covered in prayer. And you and I ought to never undertake anything that we can't cover in believing prayer, not just in prayer, but cover in believing prayer. And I don't know about you, but the hardest thing I do is to pray. And um, I don't have any trouble once I'm ready, so to speak. And once I've, I'm prayed up, I don't have any trouble keeping my mind on the message that God gives me on Sunday morning. But when I get on my knees, I have trouble. Because a minute after I'm on my knees, things come into my mind from out of left field my mind begins to wonder, or maybe I begin to, um, um, to kind of nod off or something, but Satan knows, Satan knows what's happening. In fact, listen to what a, a wonderful man, a, a wonderful preacher from England, he's now with the Lord, Dr. Stephen Alford said, he said, the most fierce temptations I ever receive, I receive when I'm on my knees in prayer. He said, the most fierce temptations are when I'm on my knees and, and when I'm praying to God. And he said, why? Why is this? Because the enemy of our souls fights us in prayer more than anything else. You catch that? Our enemy fights us when we are on our knees in prayer. And he, and he does it more than at any other time or anything else. And then uh, Alford said, I am convinced he doesn't mind at all my taking time out to preach if I haven't taken time out to cover it in believing prayer. In other words, if I haven't, or if he hasn't, or if a preacher hasn't covered his prayer, covering that time in prayer before he delivers that message, Satan's not concerned at all because he knows that it's just words. That, that, that God is not going to touch the hearts or fulfill the purpose for which he gave that message to, to that preacher, if you will. And so the secret, he said, I'm convinced, which makes prayer more than just meaningless words, is found in Romans 8, verse 26 and 27. So let's turn to that. I want you to see what, uh, what Alfred said and why he... Um, why he referenced that, Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. Listen to what, he, what uh, Paul wrote to Romans, the Church of Rome in verse 26 of chapter 8. He said, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we are. 
but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And so that's the secret, that we cover whatever it is that God's asking us to do. Cover it in prayer before we, we do it. And, and Alford says, and Paul talks about in Romans, that we're not on our own. Jesus told them they weren't on our own. It's one of the reasons he said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. One of the purposes was so that the Holy Spirit living in us could take those words, take those thoughts, those things are on our heart that we, we don't even know how to pray. Or maybe we don't have the words. And, and the Holy Spirit says, I do. And so he begins to intercede for us. And there's two very simple, quick things that I would share with you that the Holy Spirit does, and, and, and I think we all know this, but does in enabling us to pray and to have our prayers answered. One is he, and he originates the petition. Or tonight we've got a prayer list, but when we're alone or, or perhaps even tonight, even as someone is praying, Maybe it's not for somebody on our prayer list, or maybe it is. But the Holy Spirit at that time, if he sees your heart or he knows something that you need or that maybe even that you desire, he's going to originate that petition. And he's going to show us exactly, exactly what it is that we are to pray for. You know, when we go into our prayer, to our prayer place, that's why we should be quiet. Sometimes we don't know what we're going to pray for. I don't know what I'm going to pray for. Now I've got a list of some things, but when I go in, I just, I just rest before him and, and after praising him, speak to me, God, what is it that you want me to pray for today? Why would I do that? Because he knows what he wants me to do that day, and he knows what he doesn't want me to do that way. So one of the greatest experience, grandest is experience in a prayer life, is when the Holy Spirit is so in control of you, we are so sensitive to the Holy Spirit that he can speak to you and he can speak to me and he can lead us because we're so sensitive that we hear that voice. We feel that presence of the Holy Spirit of where he's leading us. And that gives you, that gives you the, the very petition, the uh, that you are to pray for. He will take your prayer and he will pray it for you in a way that God will go, be glorified in. And then there's a second thing. Not only does the Holy Spirit originate many of our prayer petitions, but the Holy Spirit clearly, perfectly articulates our peti uh, petitions. Again, in verse 26, he said, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For well, we do not know what to pray for as we ought. So he clearly, when we don't know what to pray for, and he knows what it is that we need and what we're seeking, perhaps, he it articulates that to the Father. And, and notice that he says groanings there. In other words, when we can't articulate, we can't tell God what we desire, the Holy Spirit at that moment makes intercession for us. Listen. His intercession, his intercession for us is so sure. It, it, it is so sure that it would be answered. We can be certain that it would be answered because God who searches our hearts, as the word of God says, God searches our hearts. He's the one that interprets his own spirit's prayer for us. In other words, God up there, as he searches our hearts, as our father, he knows what we need. He knows what he wants to do in our life. He knows how he wants us to be his hand, feet, feet or voice, or, or, or whatever it is that he desires for us to do. And so it, he gives that to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is praying in a way that we cannot even begin to imagine. But he's making it very clear to the Father. And listen, what Jesus, this is what Jesus is saying to the disciples here in John chapter 14 that we read through prayer and in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, you can do even greater things than I am doing right now. 
or that I will do. And prayer rests. And I think this is what Jesus is saying. Prayer rests or relies on the authority of our Lord, on the authority of our going before the throne of grace, in the authority and on the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, you can ask anything in my name, because when I go to the Father, speaking to the disciples and now there are, she can ask anything in my name, because when I go to the Father, I go to him. And when you come to him, you come to me in my name and in my authority. What a, what a, now you can understand why Satan trembles when he sees us or when he sees us on our knees or sees us truly praying from our hearts. And, and it's why he doesn't tremble when we're trying to do something without covering that in prayer before we do it. So I, I want to um, just close with, with an encouragement here tonight. Uh, um, be careful that you schedule time for prayer. I've said this before, but put it on your schedule. However many minutes it is that you, you want to spend with the Lord or to need to spend with the Lord in prayer. But be careful to schedule your prayer time. You know, somebody, and, and this probably happens to you as well, but, but often uh, somebody asks me, can you do such and such a thing? And, and what do I say? What's, what's one of the first things I say? Well, let me check my calendar. And that what you say? Can you, can you uh, attend this meeting on Friday? Can you, uh, can you um, water the flowers? Can you help us with movie night? Can, and we say, well, let me check my calendar. And so I check it, and I get back to them, and I say, well, I can do it. And often I do that. One of my one of my weaknesses is I have great difficulty saying no to someone. But then it suddenly dawns on me when I look at that calendar later and I contemplate what I need to do that day. Suddenly I realize that I need two open dates. I don't know. I don't just need the time so that I can do what, what they've asked me to do. But I need time after I have done that to do what I normally would be doing. And, and it takes time when perhaps this is, is a, a, um, an illustration, but um, when I go to the doctor or I take Pat to the doctor, it's on our calendar. We know what time we need to be there. We know what time we need to leave. And so we go. But when we go, when we drive from here to Dickinson, for whatever purpose, it takes time. And that's time that I'm not doing what I really would be doing if I didn't have to go to the doctor that day. And it all begins to, to, to pile up on us. And that's why prayer is so important, that, that God will show us how to organize our day, organize our prayer calendars, and, and, and just, uh, just give us this abundant, sure, confident life that he was trying to, to let the disciples know, don't cling to me. You've seen my father, you've seen me, and I'm telling you, disciples, and I'm telling you, Christians, today, just ask me. Of course, we know that means within the will of God, but you just ask me, and I will intercede with my father since I'm sitting at his right hand, and I will do, I will do whatever it is that you ask me to do. And if I don't do it the way you're thinking, I'm going to do it in a way that's going to be even greater than what you even ask or what you could imagine. And that's why we can go before the Lord tonight in prayer and in confidence. Um, because Jesus said, 
you're going to do even greater things than I do because he knew the power of prayer. And now he wasn't down here in the, on this life. He was up there with the Father in heaven. And so we have great confidence. But everything we do, everything we do, be sure that it's covered in prayer, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And God will hear and God will answer. Heavenly Father, God, we, we know how important prayer is. It's, it's the most important thing. It's more important than uh, preaching. It's more important than serving. It's more important than giving or tithing or serving you in a position that you have called us to. Prayer is the most important, most effective thing that a Christian can do, speaking to our Father, not holding on to our fears and our anxiety, not wondering as the disciples did, well, you're leaving, what are we going to do? Well, we have that confidence that we know where you are. You told us where you are. You told us what you're going to do. You told us that whatever we are burdened with, whatever our anxiety may be, whatever our desire may be, to ask. And sometimes you tell us, yoke with me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart. You're our Father. And so, Lord, as we come before you tonight with people that are on our hearts, people that are on our prayer list, people that are lost, people that are battling all kinds of pain and suffering. God, we come boldly before the throne of grace because you tell us to, you tell us to cover this prayer meeting tonight with prayer. How ironic. And Father, we're going to make Satan tremble tonight. And we're going to make Satan tremble when he sees us in our prayer closets, in our prayer rooms, in the corner of the room or wherever it is that we bow before you and we pray because we know that you will shake the wall, the walls. You will do whatever it takes to respond to our request and our prayer because we come to you in the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's how I pray tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.